Namaste everyone. Welcome back children. Children as we are talking about adaptations in animals and in our previous video we have talked about the animals that are found in different habitats wherein we have talked about the terrestrial animals, aquatic animals, amphibians, aerial and arboreal animals. And you must know that animals are also categorized uh, according to their feeding habits that is the type of food they take so in this video we'll talk about the different categories into which animals are divided according to their feeding habits or their adaptations for their food so let us take up our topic adaptations for food so let us have a quick look what all topics we are going to cover in adaptations in animals. If we talk about their habitat, this we have already discussed. Then we have adaptations for food or according to their feeding habits. Then adaptations for protection and importance of adaptations. And as I told you, today in this video session, we'll talk about adaptations for food or their adaptations for their feeding habits so let us quickly recall the terms which we are going to use so first is the habitat we know it is the place where an organism naturally lives and if we talk about adaptations these are special features required by an organism to adjust itself in a habitat and we know that like plants animals also undergo changes to adapt to their surroundings and if we talk about these three pictures we know camel is a desert animal monkey lives in forest and turtles are found in sea so let us take up adaptations for food so animals are divided into different categories according to their feeding habits so these are herbivores carnivores omnivores and then we have scavengers and parasites so let us take up the first category that is herbivores. So animals that eat only plants, grass, fruits and vegetables they are called herbivores. And cow, goat, sheep, horse, buffalo, deer, giraffe, elephant all these animals they fall in this category. So let us take up the adaptations shown by these animals. So strong and broad teeth in front to bite off leaves and grass and strong chewing teeth with space in between at the back for grinding. That means they have broad teeth in the front so that they can bite off the grass and they have strong chewing teeth at the back so that they can grind their food and if we talk about their legs so they have strong legs that help them walk long distance in search of food we know that goats they climb the mountains deer they run very fast no so they travel long distances to find their food so that was about herbivores so if we talk about carnivores so animals that eat flesh of other animals are called carnivores and animals that hunt are called predators and the ones that get hunted are called prey and what all animals fall in this category are lion tiger crocodile wolf snake etc so that means these carnivores are also called predators why predators because they hunt for their food let us take up the example of a lion for example a lion hunts a deer that means a lion is a predator and a deer will be a prey so animal that gets hunted is a prey so let us uh, take up what all adaptations they show first of all they have pointed sharp long and curved canines to tear the flesh of their prey so if we talk about canines you know these are sharp pointed teeth in the front so they have sharp pointed canines so that they can tear the flesh of other animals and if we talk about their grinding teeth so they have strong and flat grinding teeth at the back to chew the flesh and bones since they have to chew the flesh and bones and uh, so they 
have to have strong grinding teeth and if we talk about their claws we know that they have very strong claws so that they can catch hold of their prey so that was about carnivores so after carnivores let us move on to the omnivores so animals that eat both plants as well as flesh of other animals are called omnivores and some examples are the bear dog monkey cat crow right and you know we human beings also fall in the category of omnivores so that means these animals they eat flesh of other animals as well as they eat plants and then we have another category scavengers animals that eat the flesh of dead animals are called scavengers so that means they do not hunt for their food like carnivores but they feed on the leftover of carnivores and uh, examples of such animals are hyena jackals wild dog or vulture so let us see what is the adaptation shown by these animals they have sharp teeth for ripping and tearing flesh and uh, you know they do not fall sick after eating the dead and decaying food also because they have strong digestive system to kill the germs in decaying food we know that food decay because of the germs present in it but these germs they do not harm these animals because of their strong digestive system so, so children with this let us move on to the last category of animals according to their feeding habits and these are parasites so what are parasites basically parasites are animals that depend on their food requirements on other animals so organisms that live on or inside the body of other living organisms and depend on them for food are called parasites and the animals on or inside which the parasites live are called host so let us understand uh, with the help of some examples so here you can see the round worm whip worm hook worm and tape worm so these worms they live inside the body of an organism so children let us try to understand it like this you people are given deworming medicines in the school right so what is the need of those deworming medicines that means the eggs of these worms which are present in the soil unknowingly they go inside your body and then what happens is that they start eating the important nutrients from the food inside your body and children once it starts eating the nutrients from your food you start feeling tired and then what happens is these worms they are to be removed from the body that is why they, you are given deworming medicines but now here let us understand the worm which is inside your body is a parasite and who are you you are a host for that parasite similarly if we talk about lice sticks and fleas you no know, they stick to the body of animals like dogs cows right and then what happens is they start sucking blood from these animals here these lice stick and fleas are parasites whereas your cow or dog is a host so let us see what adaptation they show so the mouth of these organisms is adapted to suck blood of their host so they suck the blood for their food requirements so with this let us move on to the keywords so if we talk about herbivores we know animals that eat only plants grass fruits vegetables are called herbivores carnivores are animals that eat flesh of other animals omnivores are animals that eat both plants as well as the flesh of other animals and if we talk about parasites these are organisms that live on or inside the body of other organisms and depend on them for their food requirements so with this let us move on to the think and answer section and let us see the expected questions write a short note on scavengers and what are parasites give examples 
so children i hope after going through this session you are able to answer these questions but still if you have doubts you may go back to the video slide number eight and nine to know the answers so children that was all about the different categories into which animals are divided according to their feeding habits and in our next video session we'll talk about animals adaptations for the protection from enemies so until then take care of yourselves